here. Casey Tuhill coming over to the Buffalo Bills from the Washington Commanders. Edge has been a need for this team. Eric, you and I have talked about defensive line in general this offseason with the lack of bodies they had under contract, both in terms of quality and quantity. They bring in Tuhill, who, again, I think kind of ticks that box for the floor, sets you up for that edge number four in terms of his play style and what he can be. But again, in that similar vein that we echoed with Clapp, doesn't preclude you from taking an edge in the first round if somebody falls. You know, if Latu Latu falls, you're not like, well, we got Casey Tuhill already, so we don't right. need to take Latu. But there are some things that Tuhill does uh, nice. You ID'd him early in this offseason in terms of being a guy that um, could fit this team, especially from an affordability standpoint. And right. lo and behold, here we are with some advanced metrics for Mr. Casey Tuhill. Yeah, two hill coming over from the commander, 6'4, 254 pounds, long arms, 30, 33 and a mm -hmm. quarter arm length. Mm -hmm. Uh, you guys, I, I think he's that traditional DN, you know, four in yep. the system. Uh, he is a bigger, bigger type, uh, edge guy in the mold of like a Shaq Lawson, but I do think he's a little more athletic than Shaq Lawson. Is he as good at setting the edge versus the run and playing the run? Probably not, but mm -hmm. it's still one of his strengths, yes. just not. Like Shaq is elite when it comes to edge setting as a DN. He's up there with Rousseau. He just doesn't get the accolades, but that is where he hangs his hat. And I think Two Hill has some of that, just to a lesser degree, but he's got more effort and hustle and chase chase down stuff. Chase down, down closing yeah. speed. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think athletically, I think he is he's higher in, in yeah. regards to that. He's more athletic. Um, he does a good job of tracking the quarterback, whether you know it's a three or five step drop. He does a good job of getting to that depth and not getting beyond him. So again, tracking the ball, tracking the quarterback in the pocket and just does a really good job um, with his hand usage. It's very accurate mm. when he, when he, you know, gets his hands on a blocker, whether that's a tight end or tackle, you're going to see that, that contact, you see that jolt, that shock. And he does a good job of using that and timing that up, that pop with, you know, being able to disengage because the ball's now outside the tackle box or, the, the outside zone run kind of bent back inside. He's using that pop and that shock uh, in hitting those landmarks to just give him enough freedom, whether it's an inside or outside hand, to break free, to disengage, and to make the tackle. So overall, as you can see, you can see some of his stats on the screen, um, courtesy of True Media. Um, the one thing I did find interesting, um, as we break it down by first down, second down, third down, his sacks per pressure, it was fourth among all defensive linemen with 100-plus snaps. Mm -hmm. His overall sacks per pressure was at 33.3% overall. So that's something to keep an eye on, you know, his ability to, when he does rush a passer, his ability to, um, again, get that edge and get that pressure quickly and, and, you know, not just get pressures, get a few pressures, but then eventually land a sack on the back end. Yeah, and, and I think you hit a lot of the – calling card points when it comes to two Hill. Um, I thought this was again, like a fine signing for what he is. Like you're not looking at him and being like, well, they're like, who cares what Von Miller does? Because Casey two Hill is your edge two right now. Um, I, you, I, I, my first thing in my notes here for me was just the motor. Like you see him constantly working and it's not always the cleanest or the prettiest, but he just grinds and he works like he's coming off the ball with urgency. He comes off the ball with purpose. Like you're not seeing any lag or slack from him. I love the uh, comparison there to Shaq, like with, with how he sets that edge. And like you said, you know, two Hill, I think is a step down in that regard, but what he, what you lose for with that, you make up for with the athleticism um, and, and, and some of that effort. And this is a really nice rep that you highlighted here, like the hand placement on that inside, as you have highlighted there on that box, gets outside, uses that right arm, that long arm, stabs inside, gets the extension. He's peeking around the corner to make sure he's maintaining his spot. He sees the track of Tony Pollard, gets back inside, and is able to close that piece down. You see that regularly from him. And again, that's yeah. tied to that pop that you mentioned, that shock in those hands. I love that you called out the placement, too, of his hands because I, I think there's some times where – even when things are muddy and he's not getting away completely clean, the initial hand placement and pop is still there. Um, and I like that he wins against tight ends. Like if you're going to be, yeah. and if you're going to be worth your salt in any way, shape or form as an edge in this league, you have to consistently beat tight ends. This is a good rep right here against Tyler Higby, number 89 for the Rams. And you see him just get right into his chest, knock him back drive. And then again, what is he doing? Similar to that clip against Dallas as he's controlling his man He's looking into the backfield. He's reading the track of that running back, and he's able to get 
that shoulder or that, you know, side of his body into the hole to make a play on the ball. Yeah. It's not always pretty, but he, somehow he gets it, it done. Yeah. And, and oh, the hand usage, that there, one's I a mean, great one. Yep. Yeah. I mean, again, setting that edge, keeping that outside hand free, then watch the arm lift with the left hand right there, arm lift right there. Then he's again, tracking the ball. And then as that running back bounces outside, he gets free and makes a tackle. So it's not always pretty, but he gets it. He gets the job done again at the end four doesn't yep. really impact the draft as far as I'm concerned. I still think you try to bring in uh, you know, a younger player at that edge position to compete with him, to compete with Kingsley Jonathan um, and, and anyone else that they bring in as far as camp bodies go. Uh, I do think that it's a solid floor. We're talking DN4 mm -hmm. and how the Bills like to rotate things. Uh, it doesn't force or doesn't um, really make Brandon Bean go out and draft a guy early at edge you can just again let the chips fall as they may and and try to add, you know, maybe even a different type of player than him. Mm -hmm. You know, I love the chase down on these next few plays. Yeah. Um, especially this one versus Hertz. Watch them, you know, run that arc and then just the circle Typical. rush and then chase them down from behind. Motor, so, motor, motor. Yeah. All hustle, all effort. And so I think he again, he brings a lot of what Shaq Lawson does. Um, but he's a little has a little more athletic uh upside to him. And uh, that motor is still there uh, to, to help out, you know, close out rushes. And when you're talking about the pass rush game, because as good as Shaq was against the run, a lot of his, you know, pressures came very late because of secondary um, coverage and how things are muddied up on, or disguised on the back end. So uh, it'll be interesting to see, again, what direction the Bills go in the draft. When it comes to edge, I do think they bring one in, and that guy will definitely compete with uh, Two Hill when you're talking the edge position. And then you mentioned it uh, as well. I like the arm length, you know, being there at six, four and having 33 and a quarter inch arms. And like, he uses it. I like that. I like edges with long arms. We obviously know the bills do as well. You know, wink, wink, nudge, nudge towards Gregory Rousseau. <laughs> um, and he's sitting there on a one year, you know, $1.14 million contract. He's got a dead cap at this year of 15,000. So there's a chance like he could not be on this roster, but again, he raises your floor a little bit at that edge four spot. And you, you know, if you're sitting there trying to round out a group, he makes perfect sense in that, at that bottom end of that rotation, like a high, high effort, high motor type of dude who plays the run, who's going to grind on every snap. Like you're looking for a guy when you rotate Rousseau or Epinesa or Vaughn out, you're looking for a dude that's going to go a hundred miles an hour, a hundred percent of the time. And that's Casey Tuhill. And, you know, we'll see again what they do from right. adding to that position. Cause much like the will clap <clears throat> move, this is not a move that precludes them from, addressing that edge spot and, 